Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from Interest.co.nz and welcome to our monthly gold special, a double shot interview with Mike O'Kane from NZ Mint. Welcome into Interest.co.nz, Mike. Bernard. Gold is, uh, along with the financial markets generally, uh, up and down and all over the place. You can't have had too many dull moments in the last few months. Right now, where are we with the gold price? compared to, say, a month, two months ago. Okay. If we, if we talk about it in US dollar terms, just from a global perspective, um, we've seen gold reach its peak in the last 20 years, $1,921 an ounce intraday, um, early September. We down, dropped down off the back of that down to about 1500 1550 again intraday uh, US dollars. Um, and we've been not languishing, but sitting around the 1600 to $1,700 mark for the last month or so. Now, it really took off when the European financial crisis came to the fore again, yeah. uh, when Greece almost defaulted, and everyone thought, we're all going to hell on a handcart, buy cold. Yeah. But then it came off quite sharply. Why did it fall off? Because the European crisis is still here. What's happened? Condensing it all down, essentially we had a period of currency risk um, so everyone panicked about the currencies, especially the euro, and to a large degree the US as well. So they, they went to the alternate, the safe haven, shall we say, um, being gold, which is driving the price up. Off the back of that, we've also seen investment demand um, increase by double digits in pretty much every zone in the world in that same time frame. Uh, the price peaked at, as I say, 1920. At that point, we saw um, margin lending calls come in and premiums put on that, so that's pulled a lot of people out of that market. Um, we've seen profit taking on large scale, so that's pulled the price back. And also with the, um, the, the fixes that the ECB have put in, and also we've still got talk of QE3 coming up in the US, um, we've seen a lot of people move out of risk asset and into more stable treasury bonds or currency um, as an, an alternate. Off the back of that, we've just seen um, Germany's, the Bund, try to issue six trillion dollars worth of bonds and sell about three and a half um, it's probably a good sign that we might see another surge in the gold price coming up so people are talking openly now about the potential collapse of the eurozone wolfgang yeah. munchau the ft correspondent said that a day ago that we could have a collapse within 10 days yeah. there's a big summit coming up on december the 9th where they're supposed to come up with a new grand plan to fix the eurozone what happens to the gold price if the eurozone collapses it's, a, it's an interesting question. What we might see, there's a lot of models out there that would show different variabilities. So essentially probably the, the simple way to look at it would be on a negative point of view, should the Eurozone collapse, we may see the gold price actually drop initially. Why is that? Everyone's going to get out of Euros and they're going to go to US dollars because one will surge to the other. But the, the, the US inherently is still unstable, so we might see the gold price pick up after that immediately. Um, we may also, off the back of that, see the gold price surge quite significantly off the back of the Eurozone collapse as the central banks look to acquire anything that's tangible as an asset to cover what they've got out there in the open market. Um, I, the, the simple answer is it's going to depend on how it collapses. If it's a controlled collapse, then we might not see it so great for gold. If it's an uncontrolled collapse, there might be a run on the gold market. Now, one uh, option for Europe to try and fix the European problems, one that every central, every central bank except for the European Central Bank, every banker, politician is just desperate for the Germans and the European Central Bank to essentially do what the Fed did, which is print money, buy bonds. Yeah. Uh, what would that do for the gold price? Um, one would assume it would actually um, subdue it a little bit. So if they're printing money, it's, it's inflationary in the long term, but as we've seen in the States, it's probably going to be deflationary in the very, very short term. So gold generally reacts to inflation versus deflation, so you may see that the price will drop before picking up in the long term. Um, it's probably easier to say if we look at it over a one-year versus a 10-year period, all of this is really good for gold over a 10-year period, but the volatility in the short term is going to get a lot worse. Now, looking at um, the US as well, we've seen some talk around the budget deficit position, uh, failure of the, quote, super committee to yep. come up with a solution, and talk of um, significant cuts in government spending. Uh, they haven't raised their, they've raised their debt ceiling, but um, and the Fed is holding back from a third round of quantitative easing. 
wouldn't uh, a reluctance of, of America to print more keep a lid on the gold price? Again, it's 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 we're not just looking at the from from a US only perspective. Um, we've got to take into account that over the last twenty years, um, the gold price movements have diversified away from just one market influence. So historically, yes, the US again being in the position they would be, that would hold the price down. But we're no longer looking at just that. We're looking at um, India having the same influence on the gold market as the US does. Now, let's work on the basis that yeah, what the, the processes and policies that the US are putting in place to protect themselves will be depreciative on the gold price. It's also going to be appreciative on the gold price in India or in China or in Russia or any of the BRIC nations even. So we're seeing, instead of seeing these very large swings and roundabouts due to one particular sphere, we're actually seeing it subdued over a period of, well, different range of locations. But again, um, one would assume if we go through a period of deflationary, and well, deflation in the US, we'll probably see the gold price come down a little bit. So now looking now at uh, away from the financial drivers for gold, let's look at the physical drivers, the demand for um, jewellery and electronics uh, for gold, uh, and uh, and also what's happening in the jewellery market in, for example, India, or uh, demand for it in, in China, and demand for physical holdings by central banks. What's happening there? Okay, well, looking at the central bank demand, um, there's been about 150 tonnes of buying over the last three months, which... You know, we've had 12 years of 500 tonnes of sales over a period of a year. 150 tonnes and a quarter is pretty significant. Um, it's still happening in the same sort of region. We're seeing China buying, Russia, Brazil. A lot of the, the smaller nations are starting to look at, again, gold as a tangible asset and then putting it away. Um, within the, the jewellery market within India, we've seen a bit of a suppression of the price especially around Diwali, which we're in the middle of that sort of um, holiday region, partly because the price is so high. And it, it, we've seen it happen again uh, about two years ago where, because the price was so high, the Indian market was quite suppressed. The, the difference this year is that in investment demand, being bars and coins over the counter and institutional demand, is up well over 30%. So that's In off India or Globally. Everywhere? Right. Um, we're actually seeing in every region in the world, apart from Thailand, I think it is, we've seen double-digit growth in investment demand. So, and um, I've got a couple of numbers. We've seen in um, China it's up 24%. Vietnam's up 78% based on they have negative interest rates and very high inflation. Um, Europe's up 135% year on year. France, which historic, and in in Germany, they've just got these uh, ATM machines that dispense gold coins. Yeah, well, they're up fifty six odd percent on their own. Um, France is an interesting case. There's a lot of inherited gold in France, so normally in these sort of periods, we'd see quite a lot of sellbacks. In July, officially, there were no buybacks, right. which is different. Mm. And in the production sense, so that's the the demand. But what about the supply of new gold coming onto the market? What's happening there? Um, well, what we've seen over the last 10 years is supply has been increasing, but it hasn't been increasing at the same rate demand has, and that's starting to become quite exacerbated at the moment. Um, we've seen China, again, grow in supply. It's now the largest supplier in the world, um, followed by the US, Australia, Russia. Um, South Africa is now supplying less than Russia is on an annual basis, and 10 years ago it was the biggest supplier. 30 years ago they actually had to put in policies to protect the rest of the world's supply. They were supplying 78% of the Western world's gold. Um, recycled gold is up 13% year on year. So 30, this time last year we had a 13% growth, but that's down from the average of 39 to 40% each quarter. Because all the um, spare gold's been used up. People Pretty have found much. the stuff down the back of the couch. Yeah, in the, in the Western world, that's definitely the case. In the Eastern and um, Central world, that's still a little bit offset. There's still more gold coming in, which is probably where that 13% is coming from. What I don't quite get is, with the gold price is $1,700 an ounce, and the cost of production at $700 an ounce, why doesn't everyone just you know dig for Africa, or dig through Africa, all the way to China, and come up with the gold? 
Um, at the end of the day, it's, it is an expensive and a quite a time-consuming process. You've got to look at, it takes on average 10 years for a brand new mine to come online and actually be producing. So what we're seeing at the moment is all of those mines that kicked in around 2001 when the price started to pick up at an equitable level, we are, they're only just producing. The older mines, um, it's, not, it's not the same price per mine if you're digging deeper, it actually gets exponentially more expensive the deeper you have to dig. And there's a lot of mines out there that have got a very short limited lifespan because they've pretty much exhausted the easy gold and are now starting to get to the expensive areas, much like oil. It, it, after a period of time, it becomes a lot more expensive. Do we have peak gold? Not yet. Not yet. Not nearly yet. We haven't even started looking at the oceans and you know, look at what we're doing to get oil out of the oceans. So. Good fun. Mike O'Kane there from NZ Mint talking about the outlook for gold in another of our Double Shot interviews. I'm Bernard Hickey for interest.co.nz.